everyone a big big welcome back to my channel so today friends we are going to be talking about the best books that i read in 2021 due to my break from booktube i'm coming at you with this like six months late which kind of makes it feel irrelevant now the moment has certainly passed i'm just hoping that some of you are still interested and want to hear me chat about these books because they are truly great. As always, these are my favourite books that I read for the first time last year. I've got six books to talk about. I love this selection. I had such a good reading year in 2021. Please, please chat to me down below about these books and let me know what your favourite book of 2021 was if you still remember it. So starting with my least favourite favourite and working up to the best, First up, we have Stung With Love, Poems and Fragments by Sappho. This is an ancient poetry collection from around 500 BC, filled with the existing snippets of Sappho's work. This is extremely lyrical poetry, exploring themes of desire and remembrance and spite. So this book was quite a surprise for me, and it's certainly a surprise to see it make my favourites list. I have not read much ancient poetry before, I typically read contemporary poetry, this is definitely a new realm for me, but I absolutely loved this. I totally fell in love. This was everything that I want poetry to be. These poems are beautiful and vivid and sultry and scathing. The imagery is totally beautiful. There's a lot of nature imagery and feminine imagery. There is such a flow to these poems, but they're also sprinkled with these really jagged, jarring moments. It's so delicious, makes it so great to read aloud. I also really love the structuring of this edition in particular, the Penguin Classics. The poems are on the right hand side of the spread and on the left hand side we have some contextual information to go alongside it, just explaining what's going on in the poems and what Sappho may have been referencing. It really heightened my reading experience so much. This is just stunning in the true sense of the word. I was stunned as I read this. Next up we have Bewilderment by Richard Powers. This was a new literary fiction release last year. It tells the story of a man named Theo who is an astrobiologist and searches for life on other planets. Theo is navigating how best to singularly bring up his son who is having a lot of difficulties at school and in life generally. He is deeply affected by the destructive nature of humans and the decline of our world. This book encompasses so many things that I love in literary fiction. This was like perfect for me. It is character focused and intimate and inward looking, but it is also totally universal and mind-bogglingly philosophical. On the one hand we have these themes of crisis and natural beauty and personhood which are all explored so beautifully and cleverly and then we also have this singular central relationship between Theo and his son which by the way has some of the most glorious and heart-wrenching dialogue ever. For how much is going on in this novel and how much it made me think, it isn't massively long but it is the perfect length. As a complete whole this book works so powerfully, so cohesively. This was an incredibly immersive and emotive reading experience, even thinking about it now is kind of having an effect on me. <laughs> a truly stunning novel. Next up we have To the Lighthouse by Virginia Woolf. This is a modern classic written in the 1920s. I'm sure we all know Virginia Woolf. This tells the story of a family and their guests as they holiday on the Isle of Skye, most prominently focusing in on the character of the maternal and serene Mrs. Ramsay. As with all Wolf, this novel is a masterpiece example of a character focused study set at a specific time in a specific place but amongst a wider world. Centering around the seemingly trivial postponement of a trip to the lighthouse, 
Wolf uses this to explore a whole host of things. Tensions within the family, the passing of time, people's capacity for change, male and female conflict. And she does all of this so beautifully. I swear nobody sees things like Virginia Woolf and no one can put them down on paper like her. This book just took my breath away on basically every page. I loved the reading experience. It filled me with so much joy and inspiration. It made me want to go and sit down and write straight away. But at the same time, it also had me thinking, I'm never going to be her. All my writing endeavours are pointless and doomed to fail. My next favourite read of 2021 was Still Life by Sarah Winman. Sarah Winman is one of my all-time favourite authors. I will read literally anything that she brings out. This came out last summer and I kind of almost died when I received this proof copy. <laughs> it tells the story of two strangers who meet in Tuscany in 1944. Ulysses, a young British soldier, and Evelyn, an older female historian. The novel then traces their stories and the stories of the people around them over the course of the next four decades in both Tuscany and London. This totally blew me away. Like, you know when you're a bit stunned. Sarah Winman conveys human feeling like no other. This is packed with stunning dialogue, piercing one-liners, there is pain and beauty and tenderness. One of my favourite things about Sarah Winman is that she always portrays the big moments in life and the tiny moments in life with the same significance. It feels so real. The cast of characters in here are also fascinating and wonderful and messy. You really grow to care about them over the course of these decades that you spend with them. I don't know how else to describe this book other than to say it feels like bright gold sunshine. It shines all of the way through. Moving on to my second favourite book of 2021, Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy. Continuing on with my journey of reading one super long epic classic per year, the year before being Les Miserables, now one of my favourite books of all time, and we've done it again. The fuck off massive classics have delivered again. This is a vast panoramic exploration of Russia in this day. It primarily tells the story of Anna Karenina a sophisticated woman who is married rather unhappily and then catches the eye of the young Count Vronsky who ignites her passionate nature. Man, I loved this book so much more than I ever thought I would. Like, I think I knew it was going to be good, but I didn't think I was going to totally devour it like I was reading a 2022 rom-com. The plot and the characters in here are so good. The plot is addictive and thrilling and scandalous and delicious. I was here for it on every page. The characters are some of the best characters ever. Maggie O'Farrell says in the front of this book that nobody peoples their pages like Tolstoy and that is so perfectly put. I couldn't believe how much there was to all of these characters and how they just jumped off the page at me. Their inner dialogues and interactions and complex worldviews all felt so real. And the writing in here is totally beautiful and far more readable than I expected. Tolstoy really just takes you along with him and the characters. I never felt left behind. I just couldn't believe this, really. <laughs> Tolstoy really knew what he was doing, didn't he? What an absolute masterpiece. And the final book we're going to be talking about today, my favourite book of the year, was Seamus Heaney's Death of a Naturalist. My favourite book of 2021 was a poetry collection. Seamus Heaney is an incredibly lauded poet 
This was actually his first collection published in the 1990s. The collection primarily explores his childhood growing up in rural Ireland, his family and his lineage. So I find it really difficult to describe this collection in words. <laughs> the reading experience really, truly, deeply touched my heart. It had such a profound effect on me and I will now love this collection forever. To try and speak about craftsmanship, this collection is filled with vulnerability and tenderness and heartache. It's an extremely personal collection. Vivid, almost pungent imagery of the countryside runs throughout this, describing things that I really relate to from my own childhood in Cumbria. And the collection is packed with lyricism and wordplay and rhyme. It is so beautiful to read out loud, sometimes soft and comforting, and other times really harsh and striking. This collection spoke to me on so many levels. It gave me basically everything I could want from a reading experience. I felt so incredibly touched and seen and overwhelmingly emotional. I remember lying in the bath and reading this for the first time and being like, this is fucking it. This is literature at its best, doing what it's supposed to do. To quote my mother-in-law on Seamus Heaney's poetry, it is almost a relief to have something articulated so well. And it is. It is a joyous, affirming, uplifting relief. So there we have it. Those were my favourite reads of 2021. Please let me know if you've read any of these books. I would love to know your thoughts on them. And of course, please let me know what your favourite reads of 2021 were. I cannot wait to read the comments. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it even though it's half a year late. I really hope you're all doing well and I will hopefully see you soon in a new video. Bye everyone.